Good morning to all of you out there. I'm Sito Beltran. Welcome to the program Agenda on Signal TV, channels 250 for high definition and channel 8 for standard definition or as they say, okay, uh, well, never mind what they say. In any case, uh, welcome po. Magandang umaga. Pagpasensyahan nyo na ngayon kung sinto-sinto si Kuya Sito, medyo mukhang diskargado yung baterya natin. In any case, uh, we, were, we will continue to have our regular programming. We will have three, uh, a number of guests today, not just the usual lineup of three people because uh, we are <clears throat> going to uh, feature several things. Uh, first will be Dr. Uh, well, first will be Senator Win Gachalian. Kasi pinuproblema ni Senator Win yung basura nating lahat. Uh, let's be honest, many of us, well, yung mga private homeowners, lalo na yung nasa village, eh medyo hindi nyo na pinapansin kung paano dinidispose yung basura. We are not conscious of it. Uh, uh, very few of us have actually have a compost bin. At least ako meron po kasi mahilig ako mag-compost and meron po tayong mga segregation. Uh, ako po medyo guilty po tayo dyan. Hindi ako masyadong active sa segregation. Pero ang problema, according to Senator Win Gatchalian, we are going to have a billion peso problem in what to do with the garbage. Eh, ngayon pa lang, pinuproblema na natin dahil marami pong mga baboy, and I'm calling them baboy, uh, eh, yung pati po face mask, nagkalat, kung saan-saan na lang tinatapon sa kalsada. There was a time when I found it uh, annoying to see cigarette butts and cigarette packs on the streets, littering the streets. Abang ngayon, eh, bihira ako nang makita yon. Siguro natakot na rin yung mga Pilipino, nabawasan na yung mga nagyuyosi. Ang problema, dumami naman yung nagtatapon ng face mask. Eh kung asymptomatic po kayo, ah, eh asymptopangit na rin kayo. Kasi pangit yung ugali na yan na tinatapon nyo yung face mask na maaring pagmula ng hawa ng sakit. Okay, after Senator Win Gachalian, we will speak with Dr. Ron Jean Solante. Adult Infectious Diseases Department Head sa San, Loren sa San Lorenzo, San Lazaro Hospital. Kasi po, eh, na, na pakinggan ko yung isang uh, pulong niya na kung saan eh, sinasabi ni Dr. Solante, medyo may problema. Gumaganda yung pagbaba ng bilang ng mga kaso, pero I think I heard right, Lumalala naman yung mga klase ng kaso at bumabata ang may kaso ng COVID-19. Okay, so the number of COVID cases going to the hospitals are going down. Even the national government is saying that. But uh, the kind or the uh, type of COVID-19 or the symptoms are far more severe and they are of a younger age group. So we will find out about that. And then later in the program, para naman medyo ganahan kayo ng konti, tayo ay nag-imbita ng uh, tatlong uh, dalagending. Ah, hindi nyo pa nadidinig yung mga millennial kayo, hindi nyo na nadidinig yan. Yung tatlong magagandang ale, pero nako, bigatin po sila sa industriya ng turismo. They are executives in the tourism industry and they will uh, speak to us about their various destinations. Kasi alam niyo po, baka sabihin nyo, Sito, why do you keep doing that? Why do you keep featuring tourism? You know, hope springs eternal. Ano, magano na lang, magmumukmuk na lang tayo? Huwag po. Let us have hope. Let us have dreams and aspirations. I don't know about you. But I am slowly but surely making a plan. In people, lesson plan. Travel plan with my darling, beloved wife, Karen. Now, once all of this is lifted, all of these quarantines are lifted, etc. Eh, ano na kami? Emptiness na kami. Eh, di siyempre, parang honeymoon part two. Okay, we'll go to all of the destinations, their experiences, the challenges in tourism. Tsaka, 
Huwag kayo, baka swertehin kayo, makita ninyo yung mga magagandang video. Ewan ko kung na, na-set up nila Gabby at nila Dijo at nila Arvik, John, Winona, and uh, Jen, yung pong mga nasa team ko. Anyway, let's first go to today's news. Uh, here are the stories from the front page of the Philippine Star. President Rodrigo Duterte granted absolute pardon to U.S. Marine Lance Corporal Joseph Scott Pemberton, who was convicted of homicide in 2015 over the death of Jennifer Laude. Hindi ko lang alam ko ano yung male name niya. Eh. Speaking last night at the palace, Duterte said that we have not treated Pemberton fairly, so I released him. The president said Pemberton deserved to be credited with good conduct since there was no report of him misbehaving in prison. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque, who served as a lawyer of the Laude family, said there is no need to explain why the president made the decision, saying that the pardon is one of the most uh, presidential of all presidential pa, uh, powers. Eh, alam nyo, kumbaga, ang reaction dyan, marami kasi nagtatanong, why did he do it? The answer, because he can. And so he did. And uh, as far as the uh, uh, comments of the uh, spokesperson is concerned, uh, siguro ngayon, kasi nagsabi siya, you know, he may have been pardoned, pero it does not remove the fact that the court found him mama guilty and mamamatay tao. Eh siguro ngayon, ang appropriate term is wanna ko say. Diba? Wanna ko say. In other news, as he awaits the results of the investigation of the alleged controversy surrounding PhilHealth, President Duterte sees no need for Health Secretary Francisco Duque III to resign. This after the Senate earlier recommended the removal of Duque from his post and the filing of criminal charges over allegations of massive corruption. For Senate President Tito Soto, he says he is confident that Duterte may change his view once he reads the Senate report. Eh, alam nyo po, ang sinasabi ni Presidente, he has my trust and confidence. May tiwala si Pangulong Duterte kay Secretary Duque. Therefore, he should not resign. Okay. Now, I don't know what the sentiment of Secretary Duque is. But if we are simply going to talk about resignations, eh kung gusto mo talagang mag-resign, eh di mag-resign ka. Diba? Meron namang kasing ano eh, uh, irrevocable resignation. Hindi ko po sinasabi no, na mag-resign siya. Sinasabi ko lang, kung issue lang dito is if you want to resign, uh, then resign. Okay? Pero mahirap po itong sitwasyon na ito kasi si Presidente may tiwala sa kanya. Eh, yung, ano, yung mga tiga health sector ba may tiwala sa kanya. Obviously, yung mga senador, wala nang tiwala sa kanya. And it is Essentially, you know, public office is a public trust. Kung wala nang tiwala sa'yo ang publiko, medyo mag-isip-isip ka na. Kasi kay haka, haba-haba man daw ng prosesyon, ah, sa burol din ang puta. Ay, hindi, hindi pala burol. Sa, sa simbahan din ang tuloy. Okay, in COVID-19 news, the Philippine government has approved protocols for the vaccine, clinical trials, and the protocols says uh, say that uh, the recipients of covid vaccines under the global solidarity trials will come from barangays with the most number of cases the data will be provided by the health department while regional health offices will monitor the trials uh, uh, i shortcut na lang po natin ano yung pinakamaraming mga may kaso ng covid-19 Ayun naman po yung mga siksikan at saksakan ng sikip na ng dami ng tao. Actually, our problem in the Philippines and in many other similar countries is it is not our healthcare system that has failed. It is not really our government that's failing. It is the 
plain and simple truth that we are so overpopulated in certain areas, okay? May mga lugar po talaga sa Metro Manila, pati sa Cebu at sa ibang lugar pa na kung saan sobra talagang siksika ng mga tao patong-patong. And that's what is causing all of this community transmission. Kasi sabi nga ng World Health, eh, pwede mong i-vaccinate lahat. Pero pag may, may nakaligtaan kang isang bansa o isang bayan, kahawa na naman yang kakalat. Same thing with these barangays. Whatever you do, unless you vaccinate everybody, ikot lang ng ikot. Ang galing nilang mag-recycle ng disease kasi lagi sila magkakasama. Ayun po ang isang bagay na dapat iniisip ng national government. If President Rodrigo Duterte wants to leave a true legacy, pag-aralan po ng gusto pa paano natin mapupull out lahat ng mga taong yan at huwag nang payagang bumalik na dun sa sitwasyon na patong-patong. Let's create condominium complexes na katulad ng ginagawa ng DMCI, ginagawa ng, ng SM, etc., uh, SMDC, whatever, pero para sa mga ganitong tao. Kasi alam niyo po, sinasabi nila, eh mahirap naman yung mga yan, walang capacity to pay. Eh, bigyan nyo kaya sila ng reason to live, reason to save, reason to hope for a future, baka baka sakali, katulad sa Singapore, eh kaliit-liit ng Singapore doon, walang-wala, bangkarote, nung humiwalay sila sa Malaysia. Anong ginawa ni Lee Kuan Yew? Nagpatayo siya ng mga ganon. Imbis na nagpapatayo tayo ng mga 25 million peso condominium units dyan sa may Roas Boulevard, dyan sa may bandang reclamation area na pinagbibili raw ng mga Chinese, bibilin 25 million. Pagkatos ibebenta ng 30, 30, 30 million sa kapwa tanga, ayan na, yari na. Payaman ang payaman yung developer, ang pera, unit na pupunta dun sa mga pogo-pogo, ah, pagkatapos yung Pilipino, Paga-paga. Okay, let's go to the next uh, news. And with the leadership term sharing looming in the House of Representatives, Speaker Alan Peter Cayetano says it would be up to President Duterte to uh, honor this agreement. In an interview, Cayetano said the President will decide on who among the coalition will lead the lower house. Back in July 2019, Duterte brokered a term-sharing agreement with Cayetano and Marinduque Representative Lord Alan Velasco. Cayetano was set to be speaker for the first 15 months, while Velasco will take over the post for 21 months. Okay, ngayon, eh, last sa comment ko na lang ito bago tayo pumunta kay ano, Senator Wynne. Alam niyo po, nung panahon namin, Usapang lalaki. Hindi mo na kailangan magsabi sa tatay ng kung sino-sino o sa boss ng kung sino-sino o kung sinong presidente pa. Kung may usapan lalaki, paninindigan mo yan. Ngayon, medyo nagbago raw kasi yung sitwasyon. Nagka-COVID-19, nagkaroon tayo ng global pandemic. <clears throat> so, uh, performance-based dapat daw ang leadership. Nandiyan na tayo. Hindi ko naman po tatanggi na si, si Congressman na uh, Uh, ano na nga ba pangalan nito? Alan uh, Peter Cayetano, si Speaker. Eh, marami namang nagawang tulong para sa laban sa COVID. Eh, no, I, I will not deny him that. Okay, ang punto lang dito, no? Gusto pa ba, <laughs> gusto pa ba ni Lord Alan Velasco mag-speaker? Ah? Kasi kang, kahit ano pong pananaw gawin mo dito, talo eh. Mag-speaker ka. Wala namang papupatutunguan, eh medyo anako, ayan na po ang labanan natin. Anyway, puntahan na natin si Senator Wynne Gatchalian at uh, itong mamang to ay eh, napaka-busy. Uh, let's speak to Senator Wynne Gatchalian because uh, he recently came out with a statement uh, sounding the alarm on a serious garbage crisis in the country which is threatening to cause irreparable damage to the ecosystems 
and harm to the health of Filipinos. Okay, Senator Gatchalian, uh, nandiyan na po ba? Ayun, ah, sa labas na. Aba, aba, mukhang macho look tayo ngayon, Senator. Ah. Mukhang ba, walang kahit. <laughs> Medyo maaga pa eh. Mamaya pa pa ako magahit. <laughs> okay. Good morning, And, Sito. Magandang maga. Good morning, sir. Uh, ano ba yung... Sina Kasi medyo nabigla yung ibang tao. Honest, in all seriousness, people are all so focused on COVID-19 and some of these uh, crazy ideas in uh, in uh, public. But they were kind of like, where where did this come from? Kung baga no, parang nalip hook mo kami dito sa garbage. Kasi walang signal eh. Bigla na lang, boom, nambulaga kami. Actually, uh, Sito, hindi na ito luma. No? Maraming administrasyon na nagsasabi na uh, meron tayong garbage crisis o papunta na tayo sa isang garbage crisis. In fact, uh, during this administration, si Secretary Simato also mentioned that a few years back. No? So hindi ito bago na Uh, nasa garbage crisis na tayo, papunta na tayo sa isang garbage crisis, depende kung sino kausap mo dyan. Pero ang, uh, one fact uh, that is uh, uh, facing us is may garbage crisis na pwede nating maranasan. At mm. uh, ito yung mga facts. No? Um, sito, unang-una, ang population natin lumalaki. In fact, tinitignan ko lang yung DBCC report for the budget uh, next year. Uh, uh, ine-estimate nila na 110 million na tayo by next year, up from 108 this year. And then, uh, isa tayo sa pinakamabilis, no? pagdating sa population growth, almost 1.8%. Uh, percent. Uh, second or third tayo, the fastest in the region. The first is Singapore. Pero alam naman natin, muro migration, kaya lumalaki yung kanilang uh, population doon. At alam rin natin, pag lumalaki yung population, lumalaki ang basura. Dahil ang tao talagang kumukonsumo ng basura, no? Sa pagkain, sa damit, sa gamit, sa gamot. Uh, pag dumadami ang populasyon, dumadami ang basura. Pero alam rin natin na limitado yung pagtatapunan natin ng basura. Sa ngayon yan, nakikita natin sa picture, no? Puro illegal dump site. In fact, mas marami ang illegal dump site sa ating bansa kaysa sa sanitary landfill. Uh, there are 400 plus illegal dump site as to 162 Uh, sanitary landfill. Dahil ang dump site, mas madaling gawin. Tatapo mo lang sa bakanting lote, taponan na yun. Pero ang nangyayari dyan, pag nagtapon ka sa illegal dump site, yung litche, ito yung chemicals na nanggagaling sa basura, bumababa yan sa ating mga uh, water tables. At pag uminom tayo ng tubig, yan, makokontaminate. At nagiging problema yan sa ating kalusugan. Yung katas niya, yung katas Correct. ng basura ay nagiging lason. But, uh, ang tanong kasi senator no and and I have to I, I'm going to be very transparent about this. I I practice composting in my house because I'm a plant lover. I have my own vegetable garden etc. And uh, I appreciate composting and recycling. Kami may rule kami plastics should be used at least three times. Yung bang mga galing sa Monterey, galing sa Magnolia, etc. Pinuugasan namin yon at nire-recycle namin yon pag nagpo-portion na kami ng mga pagkain. Ano? Pero sa pangkalahatan, parang hindi pa rin baon eh. Hindi pa rin nag-uugat sa utak ko na sito, huwag kang bibili ng produkto na po-problemahin mo yung basura. Uh, wh what are you proposing? Okay. Sa ngayon, under our current law, ito yung um, Solid Waste Management Act, ang pinapractice natin ay yung tinatawag nating four R's. No? In refuse, reuse, recycle, and uh, reduce. So itong four R's ay uh, nakakabit to sa ating habits, practices, and even culture. Uh, talagang kakailangan ni mo i-baguhin yung pamamaraan mo, kagaya ng sinabi mo kanina, uh, uh, composting. Uh, that takes time. No? Uh, dapat i-arrange mo yung composting area mo, bibili ka ng mga vermi, uh, 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 vermi worms uh, oh. or chemicals para mag-compose ka. So, unang-una, dapat palitan mo yung habit mo para uh, gumawa ka nitong 4 hours. Uh, pangatlawa, uh, yung ating Uh, uh, urban areas ay pasikip na rin ng pasikip. Kanina na-mention mo rin, nakikinig ako sa'yo kanina, no, yung proposal na gumawa ng mga uh, tenement uh, areas para sa ating mga kababayan. Uh, marami ng ganito sa ating uh, 
uh, urban center, especially Metro Manila, were in the middle class, doon sila nakatira. Pero alam mm -hmm. naman natin, walang areas pang composting doon. Uh, wala silang areas na pwedeng i-gawing segregation, no? i-segregate. At marami rin sa ating kababayan nga, dahil nga sa, uh, sa quality of life natin, eh, nawawalan sila ng oras para palitan yung kanilang habit. For example, marami sa ating kababayan, four hours a day, four to six hours a day, so on, on traveling and um, namamasahe lang. So yung commuting time lang nila, ubus na yung oras nila. So maraming hmm. factors kaya marami tayong mga kababayan na hirapan at nagiging challenge ay practice itong four hours. Kaya isang proposal uh, natin at uh, ito'y pinag-aralan ko sa ibang bansa ay yung waste to energy uh, technology. Dahil marami sa ibang bansa gumagamit, actually hindi marami, lahat ng industrialized nation ay gumagamit itong waste to energy para mabawasan at mawala yung kanyang problema sa basura. Okay, eh, alam mo, may mga nakausa. I've actually met with several groups who consulted me on how they could start up this waste to energy situation in Metro Manila. Here is our common problem for all of those who met with us. May tiga Holland, may tiga Germany, may tiga America. Uh, kukunin nila yung basura ng Metro Manila, dadali nila sa isang probinsya, at doon gagawa sila ng parang uh, heat conversion, uh, power generation. So parang meron silang uh, thermal plant doon, uh, magbebenta naman sila ng kuryente. Ang naging problema, yung basura mismo. Kasi, and, and I, I am just generalizing, to be honest, ano, generalizing na lang. Yung, ba, yung basura kasi, may pera kasi sa basura. Sa paghahakot niyan, may pera. Tapos yung pagkakalkal niyan, may pera, etc. Pag yan, ikinarga mo na to a more efficient system uh, like trains, for instance, kung saan ikakarga lang na ikakarga yung basura doon, yung mga dump sites o yung mga, ewan ko kung anong tawag mo doon, yung landfill, legal landfills, mawawala naman na negosyo. So parang si mayor, si governor, Yung uh, si ganito, may, lahat sila are in the business of garbage, almost making it impossible for these uh, power generation uh, companies to consolidate enough garbage to wa uh, waste to energy. Um, tama ka doon, uh, Sito. No? Uh, yung garbage is a devolved function na yan, nasa mga local government units na sila na bahala mangolekta at itapon yung basura natin. Mm. Ngayon, binibigyan natin ng another option ni mga local governments, lalo na sa mga urban centers. Like kami sa Valenzuela, talagang wala na kaming area para magtayo uh, ng segregation center dahil sikip na sikip na kami. Same with other air urban areas like Davao, Quezon City, uh, here Metro Manila. So, isa sa mga options na uh, pinapropose natin ay itong waste to energy dahil Two birds to with one stone. First of all, kailangan natin ng kuryente. No? Uh, dahil nga lumalaki yung population natin, lum uh, uh, ang ating ekonomiya ay, ay lumalaki rin, uh, kakailangan natin ng kuryente. At ito ay isang source ng kuryente. Pangalang waste to energy rin na isang source <coughs> para uh, matapon natin yung basura natin ng maayos, hindi kahit saan saan, at environmentally friendly. At uh, uh, ito ay binibigay natin sa mga local government as another option. Doon sa mga hmm. local government na talagang wala na silang uh, pwedeng tapunan ng basura. So binibigyan natin sila ng isang option uh, para maging mas environmental friendly at hindi magiging katulad yan. In man, nasa picture ngayon na kahit saan saan tinatapon. In fact, uh, ang nagiging problema pa ngayon kahit sinesegregate, uh, marami sa mga basura na iiwan lang sa ating mga ilog, sa ating mga estero, at yun, bumabaha at dumadami na yung problema natin. Mm. Now, uh, ano pa ang uh, ibang suggestion? Okay, so you have ways to energy conversion, uh, possibly yan. Pero what about, kasi nadinig ko, sinabi mo sa Valenzuela, sikip na sikip na kayo, no? Mm. Uh, kasi parang feeling ko, bakit kasi pinagpipilitan o pinapayagan natin yung continued construction, uh, building in Metro Manila uh, at hindi palabasin? Kasi katulad yung ano yung mga ibang bansa na napuntahan mo napuntahan ko uh, their universities like in Malaysia uh, uh, they're not in KL 
they're outside Kuala Lumpur. Yung kanilang agri-center is not in, me in the metro area, it's outside the metro area. So parang, kasi kanya naman ganito yung sitwasyon dahil pinagpipili na natin too much, too much mm. uh, in Metro Manila. Isa sa mga naging problema natin is public transportation, uh, Sito. Uh, oh. Alam mo naman, uh, ikaw, uh, very familiar ka sa Europe. Pwede kang pumunta all over Europe via train or via bus. Hindi mo na kailangan mag-aeroplano. At mm. marami sa mga Europeans nakatira sa yung suburban area sa malalayang lugar at nagta-transportation na lang, nagpa-public transportation, papunta sa kanilang trabaho. Iba, nagbabike pa no? oh. para hindi nadali ni yung sasakyan. Dito sa atin, talagang malaking pagkukulang ang public transportation. It's only siguro in the next five years. No? Tinitignan ko kasi yung DOTR budget at heavy, heavily invested ng DOTR sa rail. So in the next five years, makikita natin malaking improvement sa rail system natin, both in the north and in the south. At yeah. uh, 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 kahit ma-improve natin yun, uh, it will take time no? because marami sa ating mga kababayan uh, kailangan pa makita yung opportunity living outside and, and moving inside. So yeah. for now, dahil nga mas attractive manirahan dito sa metropolitan area, uh, dumadaming condominiums, dumadaming mga bahay, at pag dumadami yan, nawawalan tayo ng space, no? open space, para mag-practice ng mga ganitong uh, uh, recycling and um, uh, re reusing. Okay, wh what about packaging? Kasi alam mo, uh, isa sa mga dahilan kung bakit lumala ang basura, eh ito bang menta sachet mentality? Eh may nakausap ako na tiga ano, multinational corporation, a foreigner. He told me, Sito, if we had our way, we would not sell that garbage. We would not sell you sachets because it is, uh, to, it is not uh, beneficial to your environment and it is not uh, a good deal for consumer. Kasi sabi niya, akala mo lang nakakatipid ka kasi sachet. But in effect, you're actually paying more because more. what you're paying for is the packaging. Eh, Correct. para naging political na lang daw itong sachet-sachet. Eh, dati naman kasi, nung panahon natin, bibili ka ng mantika, magdala ka ng tabo. Uh, bibili ka ng, <laughs> di ba, bibili ka ng peanut butter. Uh, eh, tataka lang ka ng peanut butter sa tasa, uuwi ka sa bahay mo. O oh, meron, peanut butter ka na at pandesal. Eh, ngayon, uh, puro sachet packaging. Is there a way to regulate packaging so we can get away from all of this unnecessary packaging garbage? Tama kasi ito. No? Nanotice ko lately sa Europe and even sa America na yung mga hotel, kahit na five-star hotel, eh hindi na sila nagbibigay ng mga maliliit na uh, shampoo bottles o yung mga, shampoo, mga sabon na maliliit. Inalagay na nila sa malalaki ngayon. No? Even in tubig, hindi na bottled water, nasa bote na. So uh, it's partly cultural. No? Nagba dapat magbago yung kultura natin sa paggamit ito. Uh, nangyari naman itong sachet because alam naman natin na mas sa isip ng tao ay eh, mas, mura, mas mura bumingi ng tingin-tingin kaysa sa isang malaking bote. Yeah. Uh, as the, our economy becomes better, uh, magkakaroon ng financial uh, capability ang ating mga kababayan at pwede na silang bumili ng mas malaki. No? At mm. in the long run, tingin ko, aabot rin naman tayo dyan. But in the meantime, uh, it's partly economic and partly cultural para baguhin yan. Siguro, Sen, ano, because we've run out of time again. <clears throat> but uh, And sorry, I, I'd really like to give you more time. But uh, perhaps you could really look into that. Kasi, nung panahon ko, may, may ano, eh, bote garapa. Di ba? May bote, no. chapio, etc. Mabibenta mo after you use it. Ngayon, puro plastic. Tapos hindi pa nabibili yung ibang mga bote. So, perhaps... If we just uh, talk to many of the manufacturers, made them make them realize that we've got to do something at the level of manufacturing, na pwede ring recycle may continuing chain of, of recycling and benefit, eh, baka mas kina pa paano po ma makatulong, mabawasan. Yeah. Uh, okay. Sito, very quickly lang. Alam ko marami yes, tayong mga multinational tulad ng Unilever, Coke, yan ang kanilang mentality, no? Kung ako hmm. ang nagbenta sa inyo nitong sachet na ito, ako rin ang kokolekta. So oh. sa Valenzuela, may partnership sila ngayon, uh, uh, itong uh, Nestle. At uh, itong partnership ay nagtayo sila ng maliliit na mga redemption center sa school, sa barangay, para kunin ni mga Nestle na uh, 
uh, mga sachet. So, may mga man, may multinationals na pumunta na sa ganun, pero hindi pa on a nationwide scale. Dapat gawing nationwide yun. Ayun. At saka yung ginagamit yung uh, jaryo pambalot ng isda. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Senator. Thank you, Sita. Maraming salamat. And, uh, we continue to support you, sir. Uh, have a good day. Okay. Yung po si Senator uh, Win Gachalian, eh, alam nyo po, uh, baaring sabi, eh, hey, lulumang balita na yan. Dating ano na yan, dating concern na yan. Alam nyo po, continuing concern. Kasi po, uh, lalo na ngayong nasa bahay kayo, no? Uh, I was reading a verse in the Bible yesterday. I'm sorry, I'm just not very good at memorizing things. But, uh, you know, a house with wisdom, a house is built. At sabi, with wisdom, a, a house is furnished with rare and beautiful things. Habang kayo po ay nakakulong sa bahay nyo ngayon because of COVID-19, Wisdom dictates that you go through your house. Really, seriously, go through your house and study your house. Kay maliit pong bahay yan, kay malaki. Yung pong bahay nyo ay may mga maraming mga abubut dyan. Yung mga bagay-bagay, you have stuff that you haven't used for two years. My wife has a rule that she took from Europe, brought here to the Philippines. If we haven't used it, or needed it for two years, out. And we're not going to replace it. If you have something that uh, you have too much of, out. Eh, alam nyo po, marami tayong mga bagay-bagay. Nako, eh, tingnan ninyo yung mga aparador, mga singit-singit na mga bahay nyo. Kasi, lalo na yung mga karton-karton, gustong-gusto po yan ng mga ipis at daga. Eh, awa ng Diyos eh. Yan, ako, yung daga, medyo takot na sa bahay ko. Pero yung ipis talagang ano, running gun battle kami. Ah, talaga kaming habulan dito sa bahay. Pero naalis ko na rin. Ano? And all because uh, we chose to really get rid of stuff and then the more things are, uh, sabi nga nila, open, eh, the more you see What's there? So, yung pong sinasabi kasi ni Senator Wynn, eh, kailangan po natin na uh, gawa ng paraan na mabawasan. Kung bumibili kayo sa Shea, lugi kayo. Puti na. Puting tao na yung nagsabi sa akin from a multinational corporation. I just can't tell you what camp, which camp, which corporation, and who the guy is. But he said, Sito, if Filipinos knew how much money they were losing on the deal every time they bought a sachet and they multiplied that over a whole year period and they computed, mas, ma, ma, mas mabuti pang bumili na lang sila nung nasa bote ha? kasi lugi ka sa sachet, may basura ka pa. Anyway, let's go for a break. We'll be right back here on Agenda. <music> Welcome back to the program agenda. I'm Sito Beltran, and uh, at this stage uh, or at this point of the program, we'd like to uh, catch up 
Doon po sa San Lazaro Hospital. How are things in San Lazaro? Alam niyo po, nung bata-bata uh, ako, ako ay naging uh, press photographer. Saling po sang press photographer nung ako ay 16, 17 years old. Eh, pag uh, may saksakan, may barilan, dalawa lang ang puntahan. San Lazaro Hospital o kaya PGH. At naku, nung mga panahon na yun, eh, 70s yun. Uh, early, early 70s before martial law. Eh, kawawang kawawa yan sa Lazaro kasi talagang uh, hindi na nga hospital eh. Parang uh, tambakan na yan nangyayari kasi lahat talaga dumadagsado. But things have changed, things have improved. But now let's find out uh, the situation in San Lazaro Hotel, uh, San Lazaro Hotel, San Lazaro Hospital. Sabi sa inyo, may topak yung utak ko today eh. Iba na takbo. Dr. Ron Jean Solante, uh, Doc... <laughs> Doc, good morning. Kamusta ka na? <laughs> Ay, sir, sito. Good morning. Uh, pasensya, okay pasensya ka na. Mukhang, ano, eh. Mukhang uh, may bakterya na rin yung utak ko. <laughs> Sa pagod. Anyway, uh, Doc, ma mga musta lang kami. Kamusta na ba yung... Uh, I know that uh, San Lazaro Hospital has improved immensely. Mas maganda na yung mga pasilidad. And you've managed to attract really competent physicians and healthcare workers. Ano na ba ngayon ang reputation ng San Lazaro? Kumbaga sa uh, anong service ang pinaka-popular ang San Lazaro Hospital? Kasi, di ba, pag sinabi mong orthopedic, pag nabangga ka at nabalian ka, takbo ka sa orthopedic. Pero sa San Lazaro ngayon, ano na ba reputasyon nyo? Okay, so umpisa natin. No? So I've been here for almost uh, 20 years. No? So mm. ito yung sinabi mo, mga unang taon, ganyan talaga. But lately, we have changed. Eh. Number one, uh, isa na tayo sa mga institution uh, accredited by the Philippine Society for Microbiology and Infectious Diseases to give training to young ID physicians who want to be an infectious disease uh, specialist. No? Uh, that's already for the past uh, 20 years. Pangalawa, yung isa sa mga strength natin, we, we are the first and one of the biggest HIV referral center in the Philippines. No? So, lahat ng mga HIV na uh, across here in, in Manila na gusto nila magpapagamot, uh, we're, they're welcome. And then, uh, we also provide free medications for this uh, HIV. Pangatlo, we are also the uh, center for not only for drug sensitive, but also for multi-drug resistant uh, tuberculosis in the Philippines. Uh, we are we have equipped our institution with new uh, laboratories to diagnose tuberculosis, to diagnose HIV, and of course we also have uh, now the capability to diagnose any other type of uh, uh, infection. So in short, mm -hmm. we, we are one of the hospitals now that DOH is looking to as uh, a referral center for uh, infectious diseases. Ah, eh mabuti naman kasi sabi ko nga eh noong panahon namin, uh, pag sinabing San Lazaro, uh, oh, may nasaksak, punta ka na San Lazaro. <laughs> ngayon eh, ibang klase na pala ngayon, pasosyal na kayo ha, infectious, dis <laughs> infectious diseases na ang hinahandle nyo. Pero kamusta naman po yung facilities ng San Lazaro? Before we go to our main topic, because I want people to be more familiar with government hospitals and uh I support uh, government hospitals uh, uh, through my work. So, what? How? How is it in San Lazaro? Uh, masi masikip parin ba yan? Uh, Moka parin bang priwar yung uh, looban o modern na lahat? <laughs> ah, hindi na malaki ng pagbago, sir. No? So since uh, I think we, I have been here for three or four medical directors na. It has gradually oh. changed, and then we have really have to pattern our building and accommodations among ours to be uh, compatible with infectious diseases, no? Like mm -hmm. yung mga beds, mga bago na, tapos yung rooms. We really have to refurbish the rooms to make it more cleaner and conducive for working, not only for our physicians, but also livable or for, for those patients na talagang uh, kailangan ng care. No? And then our ICU. Uh, ngayon lang, nagpa, nagpalagay na kami ng mga central monitors sa mga ICU namin, uh, ongoing ano na yan, just to make sure na uh, if this COVID uh, pandemic will still continue, we can come up with a more competent uh, way of managing these patients, even in a government uh, setting. Okay, paano naman yung uh, concern or need for a uh, recovery room for doctors and nurses? Kasi... 
I think that is one of our biggest revelations under COVID-19. We can no longer have hospitals that do not have accommodations for physicians and frontliners, or, or else we will run out of physicians and yes. frontliners. Oh, so yun yung ginawa namin para ano nung, nung first two to three months pa lang na we have to we extended our our bed capacity for the COVID uh, diagnosed. We placed the third, uh, the third floor as solely for those employ, uh, employees na na nag positive or those who are suspected. No para lang uh, we have to reserve that only for employees ng hospital natin. And in mm. fact, some of other uh, mga DOH uh, mga uh, positive, ito na rin nila pinapaano kasi nakita naman nila na medyo maganda rin ang, ang accommodation. Okay, now, since you are a training facility for infectious diseases, uh, referral hospital uh, center for infectious diseases, matanong ko naman, how are we as far as COVID-19 is concerned? Kasi parang may nadinig akong interview mo kamakailan na sinabi mong bumaba ang number of cases pero lumala o tumindi yung tapang nitong tinamaan ng lintik na COVID-19 na ito. Uh, kasi people have been talking to me about mutation. Uh, hmm. Could you give me the actual report uh, on the ground? Okay, so uh, we, we, we track our census no, for last, last July and August and we really have a significant uh, what we call decrease in the number of cases. Uh, like 20% decrease compared to no July and then August. And the trend now is uh, like a 2 to 3% decrease in the number of total uh, COVID patients. No? But what we observed lately during the last two to three weeks, our number of cases also that are severe and critical has also increased. So like 40 to 50% of the uh, total admission are either severe or or critical. So tinitinga namin yung yung uh, uh, dynamics at saka yung uh, demographics ng mga pasyente. Okay. One, most of them are in the 50 years old and above. Okay. Tapos number two, most of them have comorbidities. Ang pinaka common namin nakikita ngayong mga comorbidities ng mga severe to critical. Ito mga diabetic patients at saka hypertensive, no? And uh, it's really something that we, we our data is not unique uh, uh, compared to other uh, 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 parts of the world because ito rin yung mga pasyente nakikita nila na pag mag-develop ng COVID, they always go into this form of a more severe and critical uh, presentation. So nakita namin dito, when the, the cases are going down, when, in which most of the cases are between 20 to 40 years old, like 50%, the ones that are affected now are, are hospitalized are the ones who are in close contact with this younger age group. So, ang na, nangyayari ngayon, sila yung na, nadatuan, madali silang nagdevelop ng severe to critical. That's why, ang emphasis natin dito sa mga young patients na merong mga mild symptoms, as much as possible, kung nandyan kayo sa bahay, in the same area, you separate the 50 years old and above, especially those with diabetes or hypertension, there's no way that you should be seeing this individual in your same house because they're always at risk for more severe form of the infection. Okay, uh, Doc, Doc Solante, lina, liwanagin natin yan. Ha? Uh, marami, uh, I don't want to use that word. Uh, the, as far as cases are concerned, the more severe cases are 40%, correct? 40% are more severe or critical cases. They are 50 years old and above, and they have comorbidities. Dun sa mga hindi nakakaintindi ng comorbidities, ay meron ng diferensya o karamdaman yung tao. Meron siyang diabetes, may hyper o may hypertension, o kaya ay may severe asthma, etc. Kumbaga, no, may sakit na na dinadala, may, may dinadamdam. So ngayon, ang nagiging transmitter, suspecha, ay yung mga 20 to 40 na namamasukan, pumapa, bumabiyahe, paikot-ikot, at nakatira sa isang bahay. Yes, correct. Okay, nililiwanag ko lang yun. Hindi ko po tinatanga yung mga viewers natin. Ano? Kasi we need to understand this. Because we have said this, I have said this, 
months ago when the when the government was saying we have to open up the economy i said that's fine but you are going to send out the young troops and they will come home and they will infect the the parents or the the children i said i was pushing for ano eh, mga barrack stay in style mm. or dormitory residency para hindi na magkahawahan yung mga nasa bahay so so what Okay, what about the 20 to 40? Uh, kasi mukhang mali yung pagkadinig ko. Sinasabi mo pala, yung 20 to 40, yun na nakakahawa, pero hindi sila malala yung tama ng no, mga 20 to 40? Yes, tama yun. No? Kasi uh, if you look at the history of these mga, mga 50 years old na rabab, makikita mo doon sa history nila, meron silang anak, meron silang mga uh, pamangkin, o mga, uh, yung mga relative na are, are working at saka importante kasi yan sa amin na kung si kung may, nag positive tong 50 years old tapos severe tapos hindi naman lumalabas we really have to know saan pala to nanggaling hindi ka naman lumalabas so on that aspect on that note makikita talaga namin na yung mga mayroon talagang mga lumalabas sa bahay ng mga younger age group either tama yung sinabi mo nagtatrabaho yung inuutusan yung mga mga driver or yung mga katulong na lumalabas no and these are the ones that are really exposing this mga 50 years old na bag dito sa mga, uh, mga sa infection na to. Eh meron nga nagkwento sa akin dun do sa Green Hills area, yung mga private village doon, ang sus, pinagsususpetsahan na nagkakalap doon, yung mga katulong na, o mga yaya o driver na laging nauutusan o punta ka sa, sa ganito, sa ganon, bilhin mo ko ng ganito, ganon. Tapos pagdating sa bahay, may hawa na. Eh, dito nga, may kapitbahay kami, miyat-miya, labas ng labas, pinagsabihan ko na eh. Sabi ko, pag tayo na-COVID dito sa kalsadan to, sisilabang ko yung mga kotse ninyong yan eh. Kukulit ninyo eh. <laughs> In any case, <laughs> bibiru lang pa, Dok, no? Pero hindi, nakakainis eh, di ba? A lot of people don't realize that. That yes. kakabas nila, kakabiyahin nila, sila okay. Asymptomatic pala sila, pero kami yung mga senior, Kami naman yung madadali ang buhay mm. dahil sa kanila. In any case, so what else are you discovering as far as uh, COVID-19 is concerned? Okay, aside from the severe and critical, ang nakikita rin natin dito ngayon na mag madali na silang gamutin in a way na pag maaga silang pupunta sa hospital, especially itong mga 50 years old, mataas talaga ang chance namin na ma-pull out namin sila doon sa severe to critical, no? Uh, mm -hmm. We have we have mga experimental drugs, but that's aside from that. Ang importante yung yung early intervention na mag IV fluid, no, the, the, the supportive care, yung oxygen uh, support, very important. Takikita namin ngayon na for for this individual, matas pala ang ano nila ang survival if you really intervene uh, early. Maliban mm -hmm. na lang talaga nakita namin yung mga 80, 90. It's really yeah. a, really a a rare chance that they can really survive. Kaya sa, sa mga nanonood sa atin, no, yung mga, kung may mga 80, 90 kayo, i-separate nyo yan, ilagay nyo muna yan sa kwarto, huwag, huwag mo na kayo makipag, kung dumalabas kayo, please, please don't uh, go near to this mga mga uh, individuals. Mm, wow. Okay. So, so kung hindi kung kunyari, kasi uh, medyo ito, totoong story ito, Doc, no? Uh, ilan na yung lumapit sa akin by, by phone. Tinawagan ako, kuyang, what what am I supposed to do? My, pe, my mother or my father or my parents are 83, 85. Uh, Nag-aaway na kami sa bahay. Kasi alam mo naman, Doc uh, Solante, yung mga matatanda. Eh, eh, nanay ko dati, ganyan eh. They, they will fight you. They, they will argue with you and, and they, they cannot comprehend bakit niyo ako kinukulong, gusto ko makita yung mundo, etc. And sabi ko, eh di sakay mo sa van, ikot mo sa village mo. I ikot mo na lang dun sa lugar mo, pagkatas iuwi mo. Uh, ano ba yun? Uh, kung hindi naman namamasyal yung driver o yung kaib mga kaibigan ko, stay at home din, okay lang ba yun? Or... Uh, wag na lang, doon na lang sila sa bahay and uh, pamanicure, pedicure at pamasahin na lang. Siguro, siguro sa bahay mo na siguro may hirap na. Uh, hindi natin masigurado yung mga driver o yung iikot noon. 
Oh, kasi kaibigan ko 78 years old eh. Ikot nang ikot sabi sa akin, eh patay kong patay, eh papatayin mo rin naman ako kung ikukulong mo ko. <laughs> In any case, okay, so as far as the older 80 to 90 bracket, it's it's just really very the chances of surviving COVID-19 are slim and none. May mga nagsusurvive naman, but in general, pag tinamaan ka, medyo pahira pa na. Pahirapan. At saka nakikita namin ngayon, no? uh, th this is something very unique with this uh, infection. If you compare it with mga, yung mga influenza, mga pneumococcal pneumonia, no? uh, mm. the 50 years old and above, especially when you are on that age group, and then you have the severe pneumonia, tapos ma-pull out mo sila, no? and they will survive. Pag discharge niyan, most of them, it will take one to two months to recover their usual activities. Mm. Hingal, Nahirapang huminga. Minsan, may mga pasyente kami that we, they have to have oxygen dun sa bahay nila because uh, they really can't uh, breathe on their own without the oxygen. So, meron siyang uh, residual na damage dun sa lungs na it will take longer for it to heal. But uh, like nakikita namin sa mga ibang uh, bansa, three months, six months, ganun daw yun ang uh, critical course. Uh, usually it will take that long to really recover, full recovery for these uh, patients with severe pneumonia. May, may nakuha ko na message, okay? It's from a Viber chat eh, of physicians here in the Philippines from the top hospitals. And may sabi na among the young people, they, they are seeing more and more young people 20 to 40 years of age who are landing in the hospital in in relative terms no compared to past months kumbaga no nagkaroon ng increase pero ang pinu problema nila yung manifestation of covid-19 is not uh, pulmonary in nature mm -hmm. it is cardiac and uh, ano neurological damage parang mm -hmm. eh ko para nagkakaroon heart attack o kaya nagkakaroon ng embolism or uh, aneurysm Uh, have you seen that in San, La San Lazaro? Yes, we, we also have those cases. Na even in the early months, na akala namin, wala kasi yan sa criteria yung mag-present ng stroke, mag-present mm. ng mga, uh, akala mo, uh, uh, atake sa puso, no? Or yung oh. mga napaparalyze yung kabila lang, no? Parang, parang nag-stroke. Initially, oh. it was not uh, part of the uh, symptoms. But as the data comes on, They, they they revised the data and in fact ngayon, uh, neurologic manifestation is also common among these uh, uh, patients with covid not only respiratory symptoms but also with uh, uh, neurologic manifestations and most of it are in the 20 to 40 kasi parang sinabi ko nga doon sa isang column ko 20 to 40 years old matiba yung bagay matiba mm -hmm. yung resistensya pero yes. napapagod yung puso o pumuputok yung tubo. Sabi nga nila, kakabomba, mm. kakabomba, pinuputok ang kanan ng ugat. Yes, tama yun. Kasi we have such cases nga, wala naman siyang hypertension, walang diabetes. Tapos magtataka ka, bakit siya nag-stroke? No? May, may pag CT scan mo, mayroong stroke. So, mm. uh, yun pala. It was because of that uh, part of the manifestation ng uh, covid Kamusta naman po yung recovery in, in those cases? Uh, maganda ang recovery nila because I think because of their young age, they have a very good immune system. So it can take really an important uh, part na they can always uh, have a, this full recovery. No? Pero ang, mm -hmm. ang, ang, you just have to know this na even the 20 to 40, but as long as they have diabetes, no, mm -hmm. they will also take a different course compared to those uh, 20 and 40. 20 to 40 without the diabetes or the hypertension because we also have some that no nakita mm. namin ngayon yung mga obese obese na mga younger uh, individual younger patients mm -hmm. they really go into severe respiratory uh, manifestations yung mabuti na banggit mo no uh, yung obesity yung yung ano uh, nagtataba ang mga bata nagtataba ang mga pilipino na enjoying the life, enjoying the food, and now they are paying the price. Kasi natatandaan ko sa New Orleans, nung nagputo ka ng kaso doon, ang isang common na sinabi ng CDC, ay eh kasi ang tataba, yung uh, obesity daw, 
was a serious factor dahil Siyempre, pag nagkaroon ka na ng infection, eh puro tabayo nakabalot doon sa baga mo. Ko correct ba yun, uh, Doc? Yes. yes. And in fact, nga, kaya ngayon nakikita ka ng mga mga obvious. Talagang they're, they're the ones that are really uh, have a very stormy course. No? Kung mga uh -huh. naman, nakaka-survive but they stayed in the hospital one month, two months, ganun katagal because of the complications na... <laughs> Oh, eh, talagang uh, ang hirap yan. Okay, so final words, uh, Doc Solante, kasi para lang uh, eduka na, ma-educate natin ang audience natin. Uh, who should uh, watch out? Uh, who are the primary targets? Who are the problems having in recovery, having recovery, etc.? Okay, so number one, no, uh, hindi tayo maging kampante eh, nakikita natin bumababa ng bahagya ang kaso natin, no? But again, the pool of these new uh, new cases pa rin, nandun pa rin sa mga bata na lumalabas na exposed normal yan. Ang protektahan natin yung mga nasa bahay na mga 50 years old and above because ito yung mga delikadong pasyente natin that they will always go into more severe and critical uh, 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 infection or course ng, ng infection. Pangalawa, itong mga mga 50 and above, no? itong tinatawag namin na vulnerables, if they develop pneumonia, they always have these long-term complications that at times it will take two to three months before they have this uh, full uh, recovery. And that alone is really something na uh, ingatan talaga natin because uh, in between those uh, two to three months, they can have another infection, uh, complication pa rin ng, ng COVID-19. Tapos yung pangatlo siguro ang importante sa akin is we, we have to uh, observe pa rin yung health protocol. Napaka-importante niyan. Very face mask, physical distance. For me, those those are really important na dapat we have to emphasize every now and then whether you're in public, especially when you're in closed spaces. Nako, walang, walang ano yan, walang compromise yan. We have to, we have to be, uh, compliant, be compliant with that. Okay. Wala na. At saka maayos na kain. Kasi ako ngayon, alam mo, Doc, sa uh, Sulante, ako ay eh, nag intermittent fasting. Pero may nagsabi sa akin, kuyang, hindi ka nag intermittent fasting. Sabi ko, bakit hindi? Hindi nga ako nag-aalmusal. Eh, sa dami naman ng iniinom mong gamot at saka nutritional, yan na yung almusal mo. <laughs> so, so, hindi ka, hindi ka po. Hindi ka tumanda. Ha? You still look good, ha? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Doc. Ingat kayo dyan. At uh, we, we really appreciate the work you're doing. Pakisabi naman po sa mga tiga San Lazaro Hospital. Congratulations. It is so nice to hear all the good things about the hospital, how it has uh, emerged, improved, and survived through the years. And uh, thank you po sa oras ninyo. Please uh, let us know if there are any breaking news or important uh, urgent concerns. You have the show available to you. Thank you very much, Dr. Thank Solante. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Yan po si Dr. Ron, Ron Jean Solante na Adult Infectious Diseases Department Head ng San Lazaro Hospital po. Dinabasa ko kasi ayoko mabulol na kanina na sabi ko San Lazaro Hotel. Pero pwede rin ano, improve na bago na yung pasilidad nila. <clears throat> In any case, bago tayo mag-break, uh, Don Gabriel, uh, babasahin ko lang ito. No? Maikli lang po ito. Kasi nakita ko lang ito sa dyaryo, uh, panawagan ng lungsod ng Makati. Uh, on October 8, uumpisahan na ng lungsod ang demolisyon ng simenteryo at ng pagpapatayo ng Makati Columbarium. So, in short, the city of Makati will uh, start demolition work on October 8 on the Makati Municipal Cemetery. Eh, kanya ko lang ito po binabasa kasi yung pamilya ko naging biktima na rin yan. Eh, iniyakan ako noon ng isang tiyahin namin. Uh, uh, actually, oh, tiyahin. At sabi sa akin, eh, uh, sito yung mga buto ng ating mga ninuno na wala, hinukay nila, ganito, ganito. So, hinahanap ko doon sa North Cemetery. <clears throat> eh, may pinakita sa akin, isang sako ng ewan kung buto, kung kaninong buto yun, yun daw. Eh, sabi ko, yan, binainabot ko na sa kamag-anaka namin. I mean, you know, some people still have those connections, some people don't, kasi kami, maaabo kami as far as we're concerned, ano? Pero doon po sa mga tiga Makati, 
Kung meron po kayong mga nakalibing doon sa Makati Municipal Cemetery, ay bubungkalin po yung, yung cementerio para magtayo na raw po ng mga kolumbaryo para medyo ika nga uh, yung mga buto, lalagay na lang sa cubicle pagkatas luluwag yung uh, ano yung cementerio. Kasi ngayon, medyo uso na yung crema cre cremation. Okay, we'll go for a quick break. When we come back, we'll bring in the lovely beauties of Philippine tourism. Uh, sila po yung uh, may mga special offer. Okay, we'll be right back here on Agenda. <music> Okay, you're back on agenda and uh, at this stage uh, we bago ko lang po umpisahan yung next topic no panawagan lang po doon sa mga bankers uh, especially the officials of banks government officials engaged or involved with banks meron lang pong appeal yung mga maraming tao na nag-a-apply para sa car financing kasi alam nyo, marami pa rin pong Pilipino gustong bumili ng sasakyan, whether for business or for personal use, or talagang kailangan nila. But it seems that there has been a perceived or noticed slowing down of the processing 
of bank of applications for bank financing for car fi financing at uh, naintindihan po natin yan kasi siyempre uh, sumama ang sitwasyon ng ekonomiya nag-iingat yung mga banko pero alam niyo po 70% of car sales are because are done through car uh, bank financing and lalo na ngayon marami akong kilala kahit may pera sila pinapa-finance na lang nila kasi nag-iingat lang sila that in case of an emergency like ma-hospital yung kanilang kamag-anak o sila, meron silang hinahawakang salapi. Okay? Eh, yun po ang nagiging problema ngayon. So, if there are any uh, government officials monitoring us, especially from the DOF, perhaps you could look into this situation, the BSP could look into this situation, and uh, uh, sit down with the banks because there, there is potential sales there. Uh, there is a movement for the economy there, but if we're going, if uh, banks uh, don't feel confident uh, and don't understand why people would rather finance than cash, because if you buy your cash on the uh, cash, the car, it's a bit of a headache. Secondly, eh baka may kotse ka nga, wala ka naman pang hospital. So, nag-iingat yung karamihan ng mga buyers. Anyway, okay. At this stage of the program, we have three officers from the, babasahin ko na para hindi ako pumalpak, ano? We have three officers from the Hotel Sales and Marketing Association International. First, we have Margie Monsayak. She is the chairperson of the group. She is also Vice President for Sales and Marketing at Blue Water Resorts. Welcome to the program, Margie. Okay, uh, nakamute ka yata. Uh, yeah, hi. Good morning, Tito. Good. Good morning. Okay, now, we also have Pearl Peralta Maklang, a veteran in the hotel industry for over three decades. She's the Director of Sales and Marketing at Marco Polo Davao and Director for Public Relations of Hotel Sales and Marketing Association. Pearl, welcome to the program. Hi, Sito. Veteran talaga. <laughs> Sorry, di ako sumulat dito. Uh, and last but not the least, Ted Romualdo is also here. Aside from being the hotel's group director for membership, Romualdo is also the general manager of the Linden Suites. Ted, good morning. Good morning, Sir Tito. Hello, everyone. Okay, uh, umpisaan ko kay Marge. Uh, Marge, uh, Margie, Uh, Nagdeklaro na si Presidente. Sabi ni Presidente, payag na ako, pero hinay-hinay lang. Slow but sure, open na natin ang tourism. Ano ang masasabi ng grupo ninyo? Finally, <laughs> um, the President has given us the, the, the go signal to gradually, hinay-hinay nga, open tourism in various provinces and LGUs that are ready uh, with their protocols uh, to serve uh, the incoming tourists locally for the meantime, then hopefully uh, domestic tourism from all over the Philippines will follow suit. And hopefully again, we go to the next step, the international uh, uh, flights will st start flying in and we will get back all those arrivals we had in 2019. Okay, uh, to be honest, ang uh, na, na pick up ko yung SOS yung ano yun, September on sale ba yon? Online sale, online sale. Ah, uh, online sale. Ngayon, uh, Pearl, a a ano ba ang situation diyan? Kasi hindi ba na launch niyo na yan? At nako po, ang dami nagtatanong sa akin para ninyo akong attorney. Uh, ako <laughs> kailangan mag-explain eh. <laughs> Ikaw ang aming official ano, endorser and ambassador of Google ng HSMA, Kuya. Oh. Um, you know, like what Marge said, no, and like what you said, the SOS was really a project of HSMA that has been um, supported by DOT and the Tourism Promotions Board. And this is one of the, this is one of the initiatives ng HSMA para ma-jumpstart ang recovery plans ng ng industriya natin, lalo na ang aming mga members, uh, member hotels ng Patients and Gay, because alam mo naman, Sito, that um, we're one of the hardest hit no, by the field pandemics of um, the COVID-19. So, you know, this is one way to stimulate the domestic travel. Kaya nga, 
isa ka sa inaasahan namin na mauunang mag-travel sa destination na pinapangarap mo. <laughs> Uh, titingnan natin kung kaya kong uh, makahanap ng lugar na merong 100 Mbps kasi walang extension cord yung fiber optic ko eh. <laughs> okay. Tet, matanong ko lang no, kasi ikaw yung director for membership. Gano'n ba karaming miyembro ng HSMA ang sasali dito sa mga unang bugso, unang uh, uh, sultada, sabi nga sa sabungan. Para dito sa tourism, uh, how many members of your association will be participating in, in the initial opening of tourism? Good morning, everyone. Uh, Sir Chico, to answer your question, we have a total of 89 hotels and resorts uh, which are participating in this uh, upcoming initiative of HSNA. Uh, we actually divided the hotels into four major areas. Uh, which includes the Manila and Pasay City, Makati City and BDC, Ortigas and Quezon City, north of Metro Manila, south of Metro Manila, Boracay, Visayas, Palawan, and Mindanao. So all these 89 hotels uh, would be offering um, a wide range of uh, packages, attractive packages, up to 70% off, and it's only exclusive for, for SOS. Okay. Uh, Margie, uh, Pearl, open open season na tayo, no? Uh, free for all na tayong apat. Pero ang tanong ko sa inyong tatlo, kasi naku po, ako ay talagang inulan ako ng tanong. Kuyang, papanong labanan yan? Mag, uh, kukunin namin yung September sales na yan. Eh, papano kung hindi buksan ni Duterte yung tourism until 2021? At k- kasi may, ito yung problema for, for a background, no? Several people or individuals have uh, had problems getting their refunds for weddings that did not take place, uh, conventions that did not take place, etc. And sabi nila, eh, nasunog na kami noon, baka masunog kami ulit. Uh, who would like to answer that? Yeah, uh, can I? Yeah. Okay, okay. Pearl. Um, like, um, like I think we have mentioned that... Um, Hotels as marketing members are very flexible and we do understand and we know of possible um, circumstances that can arise. So um, very we already discussed in the group that we will be very, very flexible. As a matter of fact, Tito, there are e-vouchers that are being um, offered that will be offered in the September online sale via the hsfk.org.ph that do not carry any validity. And um No, iba naman, paramihan, the validity of the e-vouchers will be up to September 2021. So there will be enough time for us to actually recoup our terms and conclusion if so needed. Ah, so walang ano, wala. Kasi uh, totoo yan, Pearl, ano, dahil uh, yung kaibigan kong, uh, ewan ko kung dapat ko sabihin to eh, <laughs> si, Mr. Yeah. si Mr. Ramon Ang, eh, pina, binigyan ako noon ng vouchers doon sa Diamond Hotel ba, yung buffet. Parang alam oh. na alam niya yung weakness ko eh. Binigyan ako isang dukokal ng mga card ng buffet, walang validity. Sabi ko, panalo to. Panalo. Pusawang lamunan to, kahit kailan mo gustong kumain, valid yung ano yung voucher. Uh, so ganun din, walang walang uh, time limit yung uh, voucher na ibibigay sa inyo. There are hotels that do carry validity up to one year until September 2021, pero marami din kaming mga participating resorts and hotels that do not have validity on their e-vouchers. Okay, uh, Marge, you want to say Marge, you wanted uh-huh. to say something? Because- Uh-uh. Yes, we know na talagang mahirap po bumili in advance because of some fears of not being refunded. However, we in the HSMA, particularly in this SOS sale, we did a validity of one year after date of purchase. However, if there are um, some destinations which may be not open, not be open in time uh, for the sale, um, the validity will always be adjusted. We, as per said, we are very, very flexible. And a few properties in this SOS offers actually have no validity at all because we have learned that people, when, pag nakita mo kasi no validity, di ba, sito, sabi mo nga, okay to, kasi maski kailan, maski five years from now, pwede ko pa siyang gamitin. Mm. 
and at okay. saka, ang refund naman po, most of our members, if not all of our members, are actually have actually refunded yeah. uh, most mm -hmm. of the of the room bookings, banquet bookings, because this is accor as accordingly each of our members really would like to maintain integrity to our clients. Kasi hindi lang naman ho, ngayon magiging kliyente kayo eh. Di ba forever kayo, mga regular guests, and we always keep this goodwill with our clients. Ayaw naming masira po. Ngayon, uh, matanong ko lang, meron bang saluhan dyan? Kunyari, because you know, I mean, uh, we, we do not control destiny, we do not control the future. Uh, some members might drop out uh, some uh, some of the participating outlets may may not be uh, available to open. Transferable ba yan? Kumbaga, uh, okay, nag-book ako. Ano ba yung mga de destinations, uh, Ted or Pearl? Uh, ano ba yung mga destinations na uh, initially pwede nating masabi? Margie, sandali. Uh, yeah. Ikaw, Margie. You know what, sa Visayas, most especially in Cebu, um, the participating ano, ha, resorts and hotels are really there on a long run. Uh, hopefully nothing happens. Like for Blue Water, three oh. of my resorts are part of these offers. Crimson is in, Quest Hotel is in, Marco Polo Plaza Cebu, Radisson Blue Cebu, Savoy Hotel, and Shangri-La Mactan Resort. And we don't see, and all of us actually, all of these properties are operating now. We yeah. are operating and we are very fortunate that in Cebu, we are on MGCQ. So leisure guests are already actually being accepted. Of course, uh, uh, basing on IA, IATF guidelines on limited capacity. So pag okay. bumili po kayo ng, ng mga vouchers po namin sa SOS, pwede na po ninyong gamitin right away. And I think this applies to most destinations. Boracay, they're opening this October 1 for 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 domestic tourists, di ba? Uh, hmm. The regional have been allowed to enter Boracay. Now by October 1, they will open. So you can use the vouchers that are available in Boracay by October 1. Hopefully, yeah, pero, continue pero, pero, but, Marjorie, ah, pwede ba? Transferable ba yan? Kunyari, sinabi ko, ah, ah, ayoko nang pumunta ng Boracay, punta na lang ako doon sa Blue Water Sumilyon, or ah, punta na lang ako doon sa, ah, ano ba yun, whatever. Yung, yung bang, ah, pwede ba yun? Uh -huh. Hindi huy ho, kasi syempre iba-iba ho ang, ang management of these properties. Kaya it would be best if you buy from a, from a group of properties. Like if it's a blue water group, a Shangri-La group, or then there would be some flexibility but you belong to a group of, of, of resorts under one brand. Okay. But now, this uh, Pearl. In itself, because the cheetah is transferable, let's say you buy and you can actually give this as a gift. Yeah. It has no in the vouchers. You can actually give it to, to any and you can gift it or pass it on to somebody who may who you may want to surprise, mm -hmm. um, but these are all trans, uh, transferable. These are not refundable, we would like, just like, ishishare ko lang po, but they're all rebookable. Alam mo, magand magandang idea yan, Margie. Ipa bumili po kayo ng voucher, travel voucher, ibigay nyo dun sa mga taong sawang-sawa na kayong makita dahil limang buwan nyo nung kasama sa bahay. Oo, oh, 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 tama po. <laughs> okay, <laughs> perfect. This is a beautiful gift. Yeah, it's a beautiful gift for Christmas. Okay, Kulang, perfect. Oh. How would you like to wake up in the island that has been voted the top, ano, the best island in the world for 2020? Hello. Ano ba ano island yan? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so, so, uh, then, alam mo, I have to be politically correct eh, kasi may mga kasama tayo dito eh. Aling, aling island ba yun? It's known as the last frontier, di ba? It's the best, it offers the best dive spot. Talagang, ito yung Palawan, di ba? I mean, mm. yun ang sinasabi natin na uh, we're encouraging our uh, viewers and our uh, travelers to wake up in their dream getaway. Andiyan si Palawan, andiyan si Dava, which is part of Mindanao. And um, these are like um, getaway places for your next vacations. And... Um, you know, it's it's high time that we again travel. So, in fact, yung itong tinabi kong mga destinations ng Palawan, 
and um, um, Davao, in, which is in the island of Mindanao, they're already in also, like what Marge said, they're also in the MGCQ status already. So intra-island travel is already allowed. Okay. Uh, Kurt, uh, kamusta ba yung public response or reception dito? Kasi ako nasulat ko na ito dun sa column ko before <laughs> na sa ibang bansa, nagkakaroon ng revenge buying eh. Uh, especially in China. Naku po, ang daming tao doon, parang galit talaga sa pera. Uh, kung ano-ano, mm -hmm. bibili ng, ano, ng, ano yun, Birkin ba yun? Ang tawag doon, yung bag na yun. <laughs> Hermes. <laughs> oh, Hermes, mga Birkin, mga ganon. Dala-dalawa kung mamili raw. At, uh, eh, kamusta na, Ted, sa public response to, to these uh, offers? Actually, sir, uh, just to share the recent travel of the OT, uh, the OT and AIM, uh, given that the long haul market is, you know, cannot be seen uh, in the nearest time, uh, they, based on the survey, uh, uh, based on the survey of around 12,000 domestic travelers, 77 of them are interested to travel within the next six months. So we're really hoping that. Uh, we, we were able, we get able to sell a lot of vouchers this coming uh, SOS September sale. Okay. Now, uh, ano pa bang mga plano, Margie? Kasi ako talaga, sa totoo lang, uh, grounded ako eh, dahil mag ako sa bahay. Pero pag ako nakalaya dito, wala nang balikan. Di ba ho, sabi na nga, hinay-hinay, opening of uh, destinations locally and you, know, you know why uh for for the local destinations slowly el nido has opened in palawan last july mm. uh they have opened to the resorts um member in the uh -huh. Leo state. And then... So, kasali uh, sila sa SOS. Yes. Oh, yes, oh. they're part of it. Yes. So, and seven, they're also, being, yes, they're they're also like Minilo is offering a 4-day, um, a 4 5-night stay inclusive of meals, transfer, and every, and, um, and airfare. And, um, and air, no, not airfare. Um, air, um, round trip transfers. Uh -huh. No, airfare as well. Oh, airfare, sorry, sorry. Airfare yeah. is also included. So that's really what we're saying, that SOS is a really value-driven um, offers from our member hotels from all across the country, from Zoan, Visayas, and Mindanao. Okay. But so at the same we... time, also, we would like to, to, to encourage um, um, our, our fellow Filipinos to, to go on staycations, mm -hmm. to support the local hotels and resorts in their area, because this will really jumpstart the economy of your own LGU. If you go oh. on vacations, right, and yeah. and and, yeah. and support support tourism in your local area, this is the best way to jumpstart tourism and the economy of your local area. Mabuti then, sina <laughs> yeah, mabuti sinabi mo yan, Margie, kasi may mga nagtatanong, <laughs> sir. Pwede ba kami magbook na lang sa hotel, kasi sa one sa one na kami sa mga bahay namin. Okay. Pero ang worry nila pag pumunta sila sa hotel baka hindi sila makagamit ng pool pagkatapos sa ah, napakalimitado ng pagkain na para lang din silang nagpa-quarantine sa malaking building. Ah uh, no, because most of our hotels have actually been preparing for this gradual opening. Uh, most of the hotels here in Metro Manila have hmm. actually been renovating and preparing their their public areas, the swimming mm -hmm. pools, the meeting rooms, or even their coffee shops. They have actually been renovating to address the new normal. So we will see most of our coffee shop offering buffet under new normal. Swimming mm -hmm. pools will be open, but of course, unlimited capacity. Kasi sabi nga ho nilang lahat, we just have to, to keep on practicing uh, physical distancing, wearing of masks, diba? And oh. keeping on sanitized. And all of these are in place. All of the HSMA members who have been issued authority to operate by the Department of Tourism are ready with all the protocols. We have been practicing for the past few months with our new market segment during the crisis. And when we open to our leisure, oh, we will have 100% of health, safety, and sanitation protocols as dictated by IATF. 
Okay, that eh paano you can go and stay confidently safe. Diba? Okay, paano naman yung uh, pro health protocol of incoming or inbound, uh, well, hindi inbound, incoming uh, guests? Kasi uh, required ba? Kasi magpapatest ako. Uh, mm -hmm. Kailangan ba COVID-free muna ako bago ako mag-book dyan at uh, mag-check-in? But actually, if you're within your province, within your city, you are not, you are not taking any... Air, uh, airlines or any any seaport transfers because so you're just within your province. No, you mga usual protocols of temperature and then filling up the health survey form okay. and the contact tracing forms. Uh, then Ted, that's you want, yeah, Ted, you wanted to say something? Yeah, just to add to this, Marge, uh, most of the hotels have already implemented digital technology, so uh, very limited um, interaction with the staff. So in advance, uh, these forms are being sent um, by reservation officers. So before they arrive, all everything everything are being taken care of. And when they when they get to the hotel, it's parang worry less na. All they have to do is just get the key and proceed to their rooms. Okay, pero wala nang buffet. Uh, as of now, wala pa sir uh, na approve na buffet. But oh, people yeah. will have been oh, yeah. coming up with a different uh, set menus. Oh, so, okay. and the modified buffet, I think, will be introduced by some hotels based on yeah. certain guidelines and protocols yes, to ensure that um, it's still aligned to the safety protocols. And yes. pabalik ko lang, kuyang ha, yung napanggit oh. natin ng vacation. Alam mong staycation na to, it's good for you to rekindle mga intimate moments with families and friends that we probably have not seen for quite some time. Because we have several um, members and offers that are, you know, marami silang mga sweet rooms, two bedrooms, three bedrooms. Katulad ng hotel ni, ni Tet na Linden Suites, meron niyang one bedroom, two bedrooms, three bedrooms. Perfect siya for a maximum of um, eight to ten people, di ba? Mm. Like, tulad mo, nag-iisa ka dyan. Baka, baka, so, it's a minute mo mag-bonding with your yeah, close friends. Yeah, exactly. If you go to the hotel, it's an instant staycation, parang a change of venue, oh. you know, something new to look forward to. Okay. After Actually, yeah. Actually, yeah, when uh, you get to the hotel, dito, sa lahat ng property, <laughs> na mukubusin ko mag-stay. Okay. Yes. Okay, uh -huh. Margie. Uh, last yes. message na lang, Margie, kasi we've mm -hmm. run out of time. Uh, just a quick message to our viewers. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, we hope we will support tourism by supporting the gradual reopening of our tourism destinations as well as the hotels and resorts that are launching this HSMA September online sale this September 15th to the 30th. Uh, just enter our website. Uh, hsma.org.ph and it will lead, lead you to all the offers, interesting, enticing offers that you can avail of right after purchasing your voucher. Okay, thank you very much ladies and uh, to our viewers. Nako, take advantage po because I came from the tourism sector, I came from the resort operations uh, area and I know that after such a long drought, long uh, absence of customers, the first wave will surely be treated like kings and queens and princesses in those resorts and hotels. Thank you very much, ladies. Thank you, too. Thank you, too. Thank you very much. Have a great day. And we okay. hope you will wake up soon <laughs> in any of our properties of HSR. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, ladies. That's, those are the ladies of the Hotel Sales and uh, Marketing Association of the Philippines uh, or International. At uh, ayun po, no? September online sale for tourism. Ngayon, dun po sa mga nagtatanong, nagtataka, sito ano ba yan? Eh, wala pa, hindi pa open. Yun na nga po, mag-book na kayo ngayon up to 70% discount Pag biglang bumukas yung mga gates at kayo ay pinayagan ng bumiyahe, aba ay kayo yung unang-unang makakatikim ng royal treatment jan Kasi ito pong ginagawa ang system na ito, by booking, it gives the industry an idea uh, how many people are really interested and then they can prepare. And this will only be the initial movement. 
at malaking bagay po ito. Okay, let's support each other. Let's pray for each other. And ako po, nagpapasalamat kay Lord. He gave me enough energy to carry on with the program today because I was really feeling off today. But in prayer, God gives us strength. May He give you strength. Have a good day. I'm Sito Beltran. And that's today's agenda.